Okay, so um, how how it works? I think it works the best if you ask me questions, because otherwise I will be lost. You will see I have just one slide, I think, and a little bit of source code. So if you ask me a question, challenge me with, I don't know, uh, what you are doing here, it does not work, why are you not doing this or this or this? This will be the best, otherwise going to be boring. Um, my name is Adam Bean, and they ask me whether Bean or Bien, Bien, the in, French, in, Fra in France is Bien, and uh, in Germany is Bean, and uh, in England Mr. Bean, so I'm international. <laughs> and uh, actually in, in Germany, I did some courses for some microsystems and they couldn't believe that my name is Bean because I gave courses about Java Beans and Enterprise Java Beans. <laughs> so, funny name. Um, so, and um, I never worked, I just like Java. Actually, today morning we did some cloud native with Java 7 and uh, I say, okay, in three hours I'm in Paris, I have to talk about uh, Java. So I spend all my time with Java in front and with JavaScript, and that's actually what I would like to present to you. Uh, what happens if you apply the same idea from backend to frontend? This is actually the idea for today. Uh, I will hack a very briefly on Java e backend, uh, because uh, the frontend will have to communicate with the backend, right? Uh, so, uh, but I, I will n not cover too much Java e 8. Yeah, uh, I write a blog, um, some online courses, and probably the most interesting part is the Airhex TV. First Monday of the month, I answer questions live, and this is a kind, this is a actually a podcast. And uh, actually, at conferences, we have no time for for anything. At least I, I don't have time for anything. So what I do is in the podcast, I just have conversation with people I find interesting. Okay, so. Short introduction. I started with Java, it was 1995. What, why it is relevant? Because back then, this is like uh, JavaScript right now, we had about 50 different Java frameworks and uh, application server frameworks. And for me, it was actually, uh, not, po actu not actually, it was impossible to understand more than one servers. In fact, uh, they were completely different. And the ideas were different. Uh, not even servlets, you know, the servlets couldn't be deployed between the application servers because the very first iteration there was no web XML, no deployment descriptor. So for me it was like crazy times. Everyone believed Java will save costs and is, and is quick and there was a new economy around 2000. And I couldn't actually understand how to manage to understand more than two servers. And then uh, J2E came out five years later and for me it was like, you know, uh, the single truth, it's like, okay, now I learn the stuff at least once, the J2E stuff, and then I will understand all the servers. And it worked out. So this is exactly what I did, and all the years I just uh, kept doing J2E. Um, the problem is, some people are younger here, and they don't remember the times. Oh, but uh, I see here Antonio, right? Uh, he also started with BA and the, the crazy days before J2E. And probably you can also ask Antonio. So what I remember was uh, Tenga and Novell Netware, and Netscape Suitspot Server and Sun Sun something Server, and we had Type Stone, Gemstone, and uh, there were lots of stones. So this is what I remember: Stone Servers, um, Borland Enterprise Server, and all were completely different. Persistence Power Tier, half Java, half Corba and C. It was crazy times. So and um, so I did a lot of backend, and of course the backends usually need frontends. And my clients ask me, okay, what do you will do in frontend? Because backend is not a problem anymore. You will see it is lightweight and productive and everything else, and no one cares about the backend. Back but the frontend is a little bit crazy. Um, every two weeks we have uh, to, um, <laughs> to use a different framework. And uh, the cool stuff, what happens is, um, the last one and a half years, uh, at least in my opinion, JavaScript became extremely similar to Java. And the longer we wait, <laughs> the longer it's like Java. So, um, and why it's so funny? Because uh, three years ago, everyone uh, said, okay, JavaScript is the uh, nice programming language and Java is crap. And now we have JavaScript ECMA 6 and ECMA 7, which is very similar to Java. And if you even look at the modern ECMA script features, uh, ES6 features or ECMA script, uh, ES6 is a wrong, wrong version. The, the official name is ECMA script 2015. Like, they have dynamic proxies. 
So they are really, and they look like Java dynamic proxies, for instance. So um, what I believe is a good Java developer becomes a very good web developer uh, if you know Java. And I think just a jQuery developer gets lost in the modern JavaScript uh, development, which is uh, very good news to us Java developers, right? <laughs> and, um, and this is what I would like to show you. So for uh, about two years, I really like uh, front-end development. And what I do right now is we delete all the web frameworks and we just stick with the standard. And what I'm doing, I would like to show today. So uh, uh, hopefully, and just challenge me with question, but what you will do this and this and this. And I also believe this is the future. And what my client really like is there will be no migration. So this is why I wrote this. Lens ones never migrate. This is exactly what I did with the backend for 20 years right now. And I think if you do it right, you could do the same with the front end for 20 years. Why? Because the web platform, the browser APIs are, will remain the same forever. I mean, uh, no forever not, but almost forever. So the most of the uh, browser APIs is the same comparing to 1999. Agreed? Cool. Yeah, two trainings, online trainings. This is the AHEX TV. It's completely free. You don't have to register. I don't th even think it's possible to register, but if you manage to register somehow, you can try. Uh, but uh, And uh, the next week, I think even, we have two, two courses in Munich. And I, I, I thought about this. We have attendees from all over the world, uh, actually India and... Uh, and uh, of, of course, Scandinavia and uh, USA even, but I don't think whether someone from 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 uh, uh, French ad uh, attendees. I think they were never. So far, I remember we are from Italy, and yeah, this is the last slide, and now let's start with the content. So um, now I I, I would just need a backend. So what I usually do, I use Maven. Why? Because it's lightweight. And um, I would like to use my own Maven archetype. And why this? You will see in a second. And I will call it congestion. Congestion. Microservice, congestion service. And um, this is very fast because I don't have internet connection. Usually it tries to find something in a sonar type central. In Maven it takes half a minute. There is no internet. It goes faster. Uh, so... Um, Offline first, right? This is the first, and um, so and this is, and this is actually a simple, not simple. This is how my Java E projects look like. Um, now you have eight, and so my migration was replace the seven with the eight, and uh, and from six to seven was the same, and uh, yeah, this is basically Java eight. And why I have my own Maven archetype is because whatever I found in the internet was longer than this. Uh, all my uh, cloud native, or whatever you call it, microservices are out. Now we have mini services regarding to Gartner, or whatever we get uh, kind of services, it looks like this. What I usually have are more test scope dependencies. JUnit, Hamcrest, uh, Archelion is very rare, but JUnit and Hamcrest, uh, not JUnit, ha not Hamcrest, Mokito for mocking is uh, almost always there. Questions so far? No questions. No questions? Um, then I will sit down and hack a little bit. So what happened so far is I also got a bin 6 ml which looks always the same. So uh, what it just does, it enables dependency injection everywhere. And uh, I have just a pink service. Um, wh why, why pink? Because I would like to pink my microservices. What happened in the recent years, uh, because of Kubernetes, I always have readiness and, and, and liveness probes. So usually this is what, what happens if you deploy to the cloud. But uh, this is a very generic one. And what I would like to do is now to create, of course, my uh, com air hacks and the um, congestion traffic traffic boundary. And let's say congestions resource. And why this? Because I need a path uh, and then I will switch to the front end. Congestions and what I like to do is to return a list of congestion and I don't have any congestion yet. So I would like to create one and I will do the boundary here. Entity 
and this is going to be congestion. And uh, in kilometers, and let's say, I have no idea, string route. And what I need is a constructor for convenience. And here, all congestions in Paris get return array. I would like to keep the very brief the backend uh, arrays as list new congestion this was my congestion now so it was like 50 kilometers and it looked like everywhere and then we have like uh, congestion probably a little bit uh, nicer congestion and this is just Let's say .NET is no more true because .NET is really nice, but uh, that's what you did back then, right? If you Java developer. Okay, and uh, of course, uh, for those who don't know Java, Java EE, what we can do, of course, we can have congestion store, and the congestion store would could be easily injected into the backend. Uh, let's say here info. Or here, let's na name it to traffic info and info return return looks bad. And what I could do now, I could inject that, inject that to traffic to congestion, and let's say here plus this info dot info so uh, a very simple a con congestion microservice and um, the taxi driver gave me at the airport his um, what was it tablet and asked me to input the street here but there was no keyboard it's like how I can do it there's no keyboard it's like yeah sorry but could you do it no no there's no keyboard and say you have to speak as like, I can French that would never work, right? So I said, okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. So it was crazy ride. So let's see, with a little bit of luck, could even work. Cool. This is the Payara. So I installed this on uh on the airplane. The newest one, I hope. And where is the Chrome? Oh no, it starts right now. So congestion resources, this was I think pink, this is the pink, and congestions, this is the congestions.net looks bad, <laughs> this was not on purpose, uh, uh, this is recorded so uh, we have to say something else, let's say uh, jQuery, so like this, so, okay cool. So this was a simple microservice. If you have some time, remind me so I could just deploy it to Docker. And I think I rebooted my machine, so I will have to start Docker. So um, so question about that, the simple possible Java 8 microservice, I only created this to show you the front end because in the front end we'll have to communicate with the back end, okay? Now, it is not that simple. Uh, why not? Because I will get an error immediately if I will try to call the back end. Why? You know this? course exactly and what it means is if I go here to the terminal app and say curl minus I for info you see uh, the headers look I mean normal there's nothing spe specific and it means uh, some headers are missing so the browser uh, won't manage to, 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 to communicate with the with the backend so What I need set up a uh, web standards project, and uh, the name of the project is going to be Congestion UI, Kong UI, Congestion UI. So, who knows what Kong UI in the French is? I have to be. So let's do this. Um, so what this just? Um, uh, by the way, this is the uh, Microsoft Visual Studio Code Editor, which is really nice for web development. 
NetMiss is also nice. NetMiss has one problem and doesn't recognize the web components, uh, custom elements. And uh, if you like, I, I can sh create a web component for you just for fun today to show how to create higher order components. But you have to say something at least, you know. I don't know whether you're satisfied with everything or just so just be more uh, uh, be more loud because you are really quiet and you are satisfied with everything I'm showing so far. So um, so we have HTML page which refers to uh, an app.js. This is just a script with hello world. Hello world's the web standards and CSS which is empty. So the simplest possible HTML page. This is, um, and I ha had a small script which created just that. Nothing else happened. And because I do it a lot, uh, over and over again, lots of small apps, I have a script which creates that. There's no magic so far. Now the magic starts. So I like really a tool which comes with most CLI and this is called browser sync. And I would like to start that. And um, what I have is I have an alias and this is how it looks like. The browser sync can be installed if you have internet, of course. <laughs> and, um, and what it is is a binary which watches your local files and pushes the changes to the browser. So I use it for development, just that, and it's really nice. Um, of course, you could use NetBeans or IntelliJ. The same would happen uh, behind the scenes, but I don't like so much behind the scenes magic. I would like to uh, exactly understand what happens. So, and what browser sync does, it um, it starts the uh, the uh, web server in source folder, watches the source folder, launches the Google Chrome, and notifies. It should not notify me uh, if if something changes. So I th if I would skip that, there will be lots uh, like a batch. I would see a notification batch. You know the page changed. It's a little bit disturbing. So browser sync, and now we have the Chrome. And uh, let's do this way. So, and now I show you how browser sync works. And this is my basic setup, regardless what I'm doing. Uh, what's coolest, um, last year I delivered a project and my client wondered, where is the build step? It's like, there is no build. It's like, why not? It's like, I don't need any build. It's like, uh, why not? It's like, uh, because I don't need it. If you like, we can build something, but there's no NPM, nothing needed, right? <laughs> and, um, and he was disturbed, there's no pipeline, no need, and, and so forth. Um, What's coolest, at least in Germany, I don't know how the situation is here, uh, more and more larger German corporation allow the, uh, the users to use Chrome. And uh, if Chrome is set, you don't need any build. Um, you can use actually the modern uh, JavaScript and CSS, forget about build, there is, and if you have HTTP2, like Java 8, you don't need uh, uglification, minification, and all the other efficacies. They are really bad. So the cool story is it is back to the roots. How I started with web 20 years ago, we have the same situation right now. Not only that, it became a best practice, which is really cool. Okay, so if you was able to ignore web, now is, <laughs> I think, a, a, a good time to start again. Any questions so far? No questions still? I'm amazed. So I would say, okay, no, why are you not doing reactive programming, whatever? The answer would be because we, we don't need it, but... Um, so, so we have hello, hello world. Let's watch the magic save and you see hello world, hello world even, right? So this is the magic. Now, amazing, right? So, uh, thank you. For a, for a Java developer, it's a, it's a quite an achievement, right? So, uh, <laughs> so um, now let's kill jQuery. It's the first thing. So why jQuery is that? Because what you can do, uh, document query selector. Um, I can look up the code tag and const is like uh, Java final and let is like Java variable and var, forget it about this, is, uh, it cannot be explained to a normal Java developer. So uh, const uh, code tag equals and console.log code tag. So uh, let's go here. And we have the console, and and you see hello world. And if I select it, um, I see this here. And um, this is a little bit strange, this behavior. And there's the first trick you can use there. If you do that, you see here the structure of the element. 
And this is quite nice. Uh, what you should know as Java developer, recognize Im indirectly, what we see here in the browser, all the DOM elements are exactly the same what we have uh, in Java. This is org v uh, w3c DOM elements, this document and uh, what we did, you know, 15 years ago to parse XML, the low level API is exactly the same, uh, not exactly. We use Java binding and browser uses C bindings, but the API is identical. And uh, what I like the most right now, the DOM is a pretty stable um, and um, what JavaScript does, it just manipulates the DOM, invokes properties or invokes methods. This is how it works. And uh, also cool story is, whether using Angular, React or Polymer, all the frameworks also doing this. So there is no like, you know, secret source. And you, and if you're building a complex app, you will have to understand this anyway. It's not like, you know, leaky abstractions. It's not like, you know, is this enough to understand jQuery and forget about DOM. Okay, and the query selector understands, uh, you know, CSS selectors. And uh, so it's basically, this is the, the, the main feature of jQuery, how to convenient conveniently find elements. And this is already achieved with the uh, new API available in all browsers called Query Selector and Query Selector All. So, and um, what I can, of course, do, code tag, inner text equals, and say, equals magic. And it is magic, right? So uh, I can dynamically change the uh, state of the objects. And yeah, so this was the first thing. N now let's do a little bit more uh, Java-like programming. So this is no old scripting. This is uh, ES6 or ES2015 syntax. But uh, what you can actually do is this. You can say, okay, class, uh, let's say congestion view. And this, we are young Java developer. Uh, so um, sh make it bigger, oh, wait a second. Like, like this? this? I'm not building a poster for the cinema, you know? This is like, uh, this is like source code. <laughs> so, um, constructor. This is different to Java. So in Java there would be, we, we would name it congestion view. So, but we have to remember, okay, now we have constructor and this can be uh, uh, the main different and difference. And what I could do, this message equals, uh, hey Duke. And now we have defined a property of the class with the name uh, message. So there, there are no private fields. It happened behind the scenes. Okay. So that's basically all, and now what we could do right now, I could say, okay, uh, button. Buttons are all very good, right? Uh, without button, there are no apps. So let's do create a button and say, uh, make it bigger. It's just for, for, for Antonio, whatever it means, right? And, uh, and this is not button, this is a yeah, do, uh, button, yeah, button. Uh, because I had hell on, it's <laughs> as one end too much, but button is a button, okay. And uh, make it bigger, bigger. we have only, only one button, so I don't have to use the ID. If there are multiple buttons, I will have to use the ID, show you the ID a little bit later, make it bigger. So and now I can switch to the class and say, okay, this bigger button, bigger button, button equals, oh equals document query selector button. So there's only one, so I'm searching for the element. Um, so only one, then it works. And now uh, what I also will have to do is new congestion view. And let's see whether it works just for fun. I can just say console log uh, works. New congestion view, constructor. No one said that this is <coughs> wrong. Congestion view, and we have works. So uh, the constructor is invoked. And now let's do a little bit lambdas or fat arrow functions. 
everyone is excited in JavaScript that they got uh, fat arrow functions. I would call it lambdas. And this is uh, very dangerous because in JavaScript they're using fat arrows and we have thin arrow. So you should not uh, implement too much Java and JavaScript at the same time because it will be a disaster. So this is this bigger button, bigger button, on click, and on click is standard. It, uh, it is standard DOM function, so it will never change. Equals, and now E is the parameter, and this is now the fat arrow, console.log, uh, click, and E. Now, if I make it now bigger, you see, nice, it works. So, um, how to know that? And this is also great stuff. Now we have something like JCP, Java Community Process. So Java Community Process in now is Eclipse uh, Community something, right? Eclipse Community Process, something like this in Jakarta E. And uh, in, uh, in web, we have W3C, but the docu official documentation is MDN, Mozilla Developer Network. So if you're searching for reliable information about the API, there's only one, one truth called MDN, Mozilla Developer Network. The cool story is Google and all the others committed to contribute to this source, very similar to Java E. So uh, if I have a question, I downloaded a PDF and read the PDF, this is the same, the same as here. So I really like the approach. So we have now on click, a little bit boring. So let's do a uh, input type text, which is also uh, exciting input. Um, input and uh, with placeholders. So everyone was excited about placeholders, uh, placeholder duke. So now we have a uh, duke here and uh, <laughs> we had some major problems with GSF, I don't know, five years ago because uh, placeholder couldn't be exposed via GSF and my clients really wanted to have the placeholders. So uh, now we have them. Uh, placeholder and what we can do here, I can now say, okay, what I would like to do is to have an input text equals document query selector input. And now I can say this input text uh, on key down, for instance. And uh, what I get is the event console log event. And now if I put something in, you see the events are fired, which is nice. Why? Antonio mess up my layout here now with his font. So this keyboard event, now we have that. And of course, what we can have methods, let's say on, on a uh, new car, E, console log e and what do you have to do in javascript you have to use the this what i do anyway so what i could do right now i can say this on new car e and now this function is going to be called i would say very similar to java right this is not like you know rocket science for us um but it could be a minor rocket science for jquery developers what what we what what we do right now uh, with constructors and and and, and events and this kind of programming really reminds me on Swing. You remember Swing? The old Swing programming, very similar. Um, uh, you could, even we can use the same patterns, MVP patterns works exactly the same. For small apps, if you have uh, huge apps, forget it. But I'm, uh, I don't believe that huge web apps can be successful actually. Um, if, if, you, if you take a look at, uh, at the most uh, interesting apps, they're always small and focused. If whatever is big, forget it. I mean, this is what my clients wanted for me sometimes, you know, uh, how to migrate Swing with 500 panels to web. So, okay, if you have a, you imagine a web app with 500 panels, no one would use it, okay? On Apple Watch would be even nicer. So, we have that. Uh, questions? So now we can play with that, and you can say, okay, what we get, of course, is a little bit, you know, uh, how it's called uh, data binding. Well, what, I, what I could do right now is we don't have the code. So I could say, yeah, this is the output, output, and this is code, and here, this output dot inner text. This is what you have to know. 
equals e dot target I think is value. Let's see. Oh, this is so this is this are the events. Uh this output e target value. No. Text, I guess. Hmm? Mm. On your car, car, E, E, target value. What do you think? Ah, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Completely. I have to invoke the right function. This is the basic problem. So um, data binding, very very good. So I would now search for two hours, and there will be say, okay, there's a stupid JavaScript. Just go back to Java, right? And uh, <laughs> this um, this um, output inner text is what we can do equals e. I think target value is what I remember. If not, I wish you could you could do the trick with console dot uh, dir, or you can also d always do debugger. If you write debugger, it will stop. Uh, and open the debugger, but who would like to use debugger if we have console out, right? So we have this uh, data binding. This is um, um, on key press, and here I would say this data binding e. So, uh, so try it. Oh, I see. It seems to work. So we have a kind of data binding, except. This back button does not work. And what we have, we have, for instance, we can have on change, I think. It's another interesting part. Now it, it just change if I just uh, on blur, if I switch the focus, now it takes the the value. But this is as I remember how the uh, how the um, Angular guys with Angular 1 impressed, you know, the web world. This is exactly what happened in the fi uh, first five minutes. We get it without any frameworks. And um, you will have to understand it anyway. So if you have React or Angular using exactly the same events, um, usually they are a little bit, they're they are not applied directly to DOM elements rather than on virtual DOM, but the names are the same. Questions? No. Then I will try to communicate with the backend. So this was just easy. What you can do with the events, and we have a button and input type text. And now let's say I would like to access the backend, fetch some JSON, and display the congestions somewhere. Agreed? This is the mission. So uh, what I forgot is the course filter. I wrote once for Java e. course, course, um, and this should be, no, this one, Chuxeres course, and I think this is the right one. Uh, cross origin resource sharing. This is a this is a st standard, and this is what we already knew with the applets. So if you remember applets. Um, we could, uh, applet could only communicate with the server from which it was loaded. And this is exactly the standard. And now we have the problem. We have we have the backend app, the Java e app, and we have another server with browser sync. This is a realistic example, actually. Backend microservice and front front end user interface. And the front end user interface would like to communicate with the backend, okay? And in order to allow this, I need a course filter. So um, this is what everyone has to do, not only Java developers. Go for it and run it. Run. And uh, yeah, this is okay. Now, where is my terminal? If I change now here, watch this uh, headers and now we have more headers. And these are standard headers uh, which allow the browser to go to my server and fetch the JSON. Without the, uh, the headers, I would get a Chrome arrow-like cross-origin problem or something like this. I forgot the this was a red text in the console. Okay? So, also standard, W3C, you have to, there, there is no way around. Except, I think, there is a flag in Chrome where you can disable the full security in browser, but this is crazy. Okay? Questions? No questions. Obvious. For oh, very good.
yeah, I use my custom made class. I show you the the class. Because of Java E, everything is small except your architects are crazy, but if not, uh, everything is uh, very lean. And um, this is the custom class called container response filter. And what this class does, it sets all the headers. Yeah. Um, I thought about this um, to customize everything and make it configurable, but at the end of the day, it is on GitHub, it's Apache. I think it's easier if you just copy the source code and do whatever you like with that. This is what usually happens in projects. Because if I would customize or configure this, it would be a major project with uh, state charts, diagrams, or whatever. And this is the easiest possible way. Very good, thank you. Uh, other questions? Cool. Antonio is big, big enough. Now I make uh, the, 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 <laughs> the font larger, and you don't even look at the screen right now. You know, spend a lot of time no, on Facebook or whatever. Huh? Not because it's uh, white. You know, I only look when it's black. Ah, OK. Now. I will try to make the la left side black as well. This is a, <laughs> but I will need CSS for this. So this is like advanced stuff, man. Because usually what we do is um, blink and pink, right? So Java developers. Okay, cool. Um, source code. Everyone understood what happened. Java 8 syntax. The ugly JavaScript all would be like function e, and the body would look like in a class. That's the old stuff. We have the view, and let's create a service. Controller, factory, what you learned in Angular 1, Angular 1 is German, Angular 1. <laughs> we can name it whatever we like, right? In, in Angular, the factory, service, factory, service, and third name. I forgot the third name. We're exactly the same. Hmm? Yeah, con uh, controller will a little bit different, but the factory and singleton, I think factory, singleton, and a service were exactly the same. And not even Google knew when to use what. Uh, Angular 2 is a little bit unified with the problem that to have Hello World around 35,000 lines, 35,000 uh, files are downloaded. So this is what I showed you right now. This would be the Angular 2 screen. So without internet, it wouldn't be possible to show you something. Um, okay, uh, now, <coughs> then let's create a service. Congestion service, yes. Class congestion service. And a method uh, get all congestions. So now the question is what we can do, right? Yeah, congestion. Th this is French. Congestions. So, <laughs> uh, contestions, uh, yeah. Uh, how is congestion in French? The same. Congestion. Conge congestion. In German, it's Stau. Done. So, um, and now I would like to call the backend here. The question is, we have two classes. What to do? What, do you, what we could do, of course, is to include the class here with a script tag, which is a little bit boring. So I cannot have 500 classes and 500 script imports. I mean, in, in, and we will have to use this, the order as well, which is crazy. Times are over. What you can do? Type equals what? What? Script? No. Hmm? Module. Module. What I show you right now, the newest feature in JavaScript, um, modules, also known as import statements in Java. 20 years old in Java, huge excitement in JavaScript. So let's reintroduce imports. Type module, watch this. Uh, so what, you can, what do you have to do? Export default. Don't use default in Angular 2, it will break your Angular. So I learned this after one night, but uh, everywhere ex, uh, outside Angular, you can use default standard. And now my app, can use um, import congestion service, and this is a little bit different from, and this is the file, and has to be in the same folder. N it doesn't have to be to this in the same folder, but it is relative to the file. And, and this is uh, congestion service.js. 
And now I have it done. What the browser will do, it will download this file first and then re-download this file. You can say crazy slow because of 500 files, there were 500 downloads, but we have HTTP2, so the server could pre-push whatever the, the, the browser needs in upfront. And the cool story is, JSF, the newest one, already does it because JSF exactly knows what the browser needs. So if you just upgrade to newest prime faces, this happens behind the scenes. So it can be that JSF is the new hot crazy framework again, right? So, uh, so we have this. Um, now let's see where it works. I could just say, okay, I would like to have my service, and the service is new, new congestion service. And uh, let's see whether it's there. Log the service, and we should see something. Service. And we see congestion service, so our module is working. Cool, right? Pretty cool, uh, I would say. And this is what I did in the enterprise project. So we have imports. Uh, this skills, of course, requires JS, require JS and all the other uh, module frameworks, what you have had to learn the last five years. Forget about this. Now we have standards. Okay. By the way, very similar to React already. In React, for instance, you will have exactly the same import statements. Uh, not exactly the same, similar. The JS wouldn't be needed. Beca why not? Because in React, the uh, how it's called the Packer, forget uh, the um, web bundler. How it's called in in in, um, in React, the uh, the tool which packs everything like Maven. Webpack, not web bundler. Webpack. Um, it's uh, what the web Webpack does. You can configure that the JS is not needed, for instance. Questions. Mm. Oh, very good. Uh, this is a very good question. So, without the default, uh, you would have to write such a thing. And what it means is there can be more than one. So, in the curly braces, you could import whatever is in the file. With the default is more like Java. This is why I like it. With default, I would say, let's introduce a new pattern called Highlander, right? There could be only one export default stuff. And, yeah. And if possible, I always use export default, but usually I export just one one single class. But you, and what's nice in JavaScript, you could even export one constant or method uh, or whatever. It doesn't have to be a class. It can be something. This is what I show is just standard. There is no framework involved. This is really what I like. I learn it once and never again. This is my strategy to survive, you know. Um, so this is why I stick with Java E. My hope is now I learn this once and will don't have to look at all other frameworks, mm -hmm. which works well in the last two years, I would say. Uh, very good. Other questions? Then let's kill other frameworks partially reactive. So uh, in, in, in JavaScript, it is a new function called fetch. In Angular, this would be HTTP client with Eric's Java reactive uh, library, which potentially can convert the reactive stuff back to the promise. Um, I would just show you one function, which does this similar stuff, not the same. This would be uh, offensive, very similar. What? Pardon? No, no point, uh, fetch. 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 <coughs> yes. Is it easy to get here internet? internet? Later, after the break, because I can show you all the references in the web where to find the stuff, this is what I would like to show you. Um, so, uh, and to what fetch? We have to know the URI, and this was the URI. This is what I have to know. So now, cool. Uh, no, that's not my editor. This is my editor. I have to go to the congestion, congestion service, and now, watch this, fetch. Done. Of course, it's too simple. Therefore, you see a lot of frameworks. I, I would est estimate 500 JavaScript frameworks which try to you know to uh, to make this better. For me, it's good enough. Let's say so. Never migration. This will stick forever in browsers. But so and the cool story is asynchronous. So what I can say now then, if you get something back, if then what you get back is response, which is standardized, and the fat arrow. And now I can convert the response to JSON or to text. And now I have say return. And what I get back is the promise. So uh, for 
for the jQuery developer, the head explodes, and now I can tell, okay, what is, what is promise? It's future. They didn't like to call it future because it would be too much Java, right? So let's mi make a rename. Now our future is JavaScript promise. Uh, very similar, very, very similar. And this uh, then response, response to JSON is uh, similar to map somehow. Yet catch, of course. As Java developer, should know catch. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, it's not that easy to make it really robust. What you will have to do is we will have to 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 catch the uh, response code, right? Because what can happen is that 500 should cause error. So what we could decide to do is to on uh, error 500, I will throw my my own exception, and then catch it. This what we could do in more rob robust implementation, and. Um, yeah, and before fetch, there was XHR, and this was uh, a little bit uglier, but not a problem, I would say. This was like 10 lines of code, and this is just one liner, okay? Very good questions. Other questions? No questions. So now let's try, the idea is if you push the button, then the server is going to be called and something should happen in the browser. So we are then pr pretty far ready. So we have a highly interactive, uh, really nice, application, right? With big font. Okay, so app.js and we have our button here. And the button is uh, on click, on new, let's say not, not on new char rather than uh, fetch data from server. And by the way, uh, what usually happens, we don't need the event. No one interested in click event because there's no no interesting information. And this is fetch data from server. And I can say this service dot uh, get uh, get all congestions and then just to try it, then this is my JSON object. I could say okay, JSON uh, this output dot inner text and just for fun, just associated with the J. So um, where's the button? You see object, object. It doesn't look that bad. So there are two objects. Yeah, this is like two string, of course. It's also <laughs> similar in JavaScript, of course. So it's two string. And the problem owner is we have an array of objects. So if you, you would like to have a loop or something, right? So uh, now the question is, can we create new markup on the fly? Is it possible? Not. Uh, of course, it's possible, and uh, there's also API for that. So what you could do is just write list, for instance, and this would be a uh, congestion. And uh, what I could do right now is, let's say here, then J, and let's pass it to another method. This uh, write list with J. So now I have array of congestions here, congestions for each. So the um, for each exactly, and this is similar to Java. So what we have here, we have one congestion, each one console log c. This is not needed, <coughs> and now I say bigger. You see two congestions here, okay. And I can say I would like to have congestion just the kilometer of the congestion. Then uh, do it again. This is doesn't. These are the kilometers. And the cool story is, in JavaScript there are backticks. And uh, this is very nice for templates. So let's show let's m show you this. So what I could do, I can say backticks here, and say here dollar c dot kilometer and dollar c dot uh what was it uh message i guess no message what was it route or something right route then try route so we have now 50 asterisk 12 jquery looks bad 
Okay, so it's very easy. This is why we need JSON to emit JSON from the backend because it's really easy in JavaScript to dissect the JSON. And this is called backticks, was also introduced in ECMAScript 2015. I I'm using this, for instance, if I, this is also multi-line string uh, to, create, uh, to create templates. So it's like, uh, almost like, uh, yeah, I don't know whether they remember mustache or handlebars. So it's the early days of templating, like JSPs. <laughs> JSPs are back, right. So, um, questions so far? Pardon? Could we type the congestion parameter? What can I do? Could we type the parameters at the right list? Wait, class or congestion object? The, the class of congestion object? No. Could we specify a type for the parameter? No. no. In JavaScript, there are no types. Okay. So a JavaScript is typed, uh, but at runtime. So everything has a type, but it can, yeah. But uh, if you would like to have type, there is a, a, a TypeScript language from Microsoft which extends JavaScript, but this is extremely dangerous language. Because uh, it's, uh, architects like it, because I saw TypeScript projects, they look like crazy, Java e developers had nothing to do, like interfaces, factories, abstract factories, dynamic proxies, decorators, all patterns, patterns we had, you know, 20 years ago, now I see in the front end. And some frameworks even support dependency injection with modules in front end. Can you imagine this? <laughs> yeah? Okay. Um. Pardon? Can you make it blocking? It works? <coughs> you ask me whether I make it working. No. No. <laughs> I said, it works already. Like, I, this is like, I'm pretty happy with the method. The fetch method? Yes. Could we make it blocking? Blocking? Block yes. Ah, you are expert. Yes. Uh, I can try. Uh, I can try. It depends on the browser. Async const uh, result equals async and uh, return result. It's a little bit red. Unexpected identifier. And uh, not async await, sorry. So uh, this looks better. Uh, better is better. I mean, completely. So, uh, and now you would like to destroy my code, right? This is your secret, secret mission. Fetch data from server, fetch data from server. So what it means right now, what we, let's see what happens. We get something else back. We get here the, um, then this write list, write list. We don't need the write usually. Uh, let result console log result or debugger also nice so if i click here it starts it opens a debugger so nice trick but who needs a debugger right with this resolution and this big font the debugger is useless i would say so um Make it bigger, as you can see. Promise, which is resolved. This is resolved promise, and the array is there. So I'm just wondering, uh, I should get the array here, not the resolved promise. But this is how it makes it synchronous. But this is very new, and I don't use this in production, because only recent Chrome browsers uh, supports that. And usually, you would like to have it asynchronous. And this is, a this is asynchronous. But the caller waits until it gets received, but this is not blocking wait. It, it works like the data is stored in the event queue and then passed back to you without messing up, messing the environment. Okay? So, I would like to roll it back because this is very new and I don't think it, it is supported in Internet Explorer. This is the problem. So, this is... And so, uh, as far I don't know, so, but this is, uh, this is fairly new. This async and await is very new. Okay. Um, 
back this 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 async may, may make that it's not async it makes it synchron synchronous again so you don't have to wait and uh, so if we remove this and that then you can re return the result and now it should behave as before return fetch uh, actually I know why it was wrong what I should have done is invoke fetch in async and await and I went too far this was already too far so I got the JSON back which was resolved so what I should done is just call the fetch async await and that would get the JSON back and then again so sorry so this was my mistake I just forgot about that yeah What do you call your uh, HTTPS? Uh, API, secured API, by fetch. HTTPS. Uh, or is it, no, this what it mean? Oh, you mean header, yeah. some token. Yeah. Um, there is a, uh, this, this fetch is just get. And the second parameter is, I think, request object. And you can pass headers, for instance. There's a header, header map or something. It looks like hash map, so you can put your headers. So you can pass tokens back and forth, JWT or something. Yeah, T and and if you would like to have get put, uh, sorry, put post delete the same. So you have to say request method is get or or post. By the way, if you don't have internet right now, like uh, I don't have right now, what I can do, for instance, dev docs io, this is offline uh, documentation. It downloads all the MDN uh, in offline cache, so I can look at, at this right now and say fetch and there's the DOM uh, there's the fetch API using fetch and uh, you see this is the object I talked about method headers mode course and cache default but this headers is my headers and you see this is the object which looks like a hash map so you can add to the object whatever you like security tokens uh, headers e tags or whatever you would like to have and uh, then this is passed back and forth and default is get but if you have, for instance, put here, then use put. Okay? Cool. DevDocs.io, offline app. And um, what I also showed you was uh, query selector, query selector. This was this API. And uh, yeah, like Javadoc. So now back to my app. All congestions. What we did here was uh, the service all conge congestions, exactly. And we wanted to, then we pass the JSON to this write list, right? Write, write list, write list with the J. So this was the idea, and there was no result. And you have always used the this, which I do anyway in Java, so it was not a big deal for me. But if you forget the this, it won't work. It's, it says unknown, unknown, param unknown method. Make it bigger, so it works again. And now what I, what I wanted to show you, what you can also do, let's say create a new tag, just this. And then, if you like, we can do web sockets, which is a little bit boring but uh, impressive, I would say. Uh, this is uh, like two liner in backend and, and one line in the front end and you will see asynchronous communication. Or if we have some time, so I forgot the time, nine uh, web components. So how to create your own element like <coughs> congestion tag, for instance, right? With, uh, with behavior and look and feel and responsive design, how to make a modern layout with CSS. So I can show you what a Java developer can achieve without any design design skills. So, um, uh, create, let's say create row. This would be, let's say, the content. So what you can do, document, create element. You can create whatever you like. Um, and what I would like to create is a P. Const uh, P element. And now I can say P element dot uh, inner text this is the con this is the content content return p element element 
so it creates on the fly the elements and uh, yeah and now I could say here for instance piece where to put the piece for each Okay, this output, this output dot append child, and this is what we know know from XML, Java tricks, what he did back then with soap and all this, which almost almost forgotten, um, and um, this create row, and let's say c dot uh, kilometers. So uh, make it bigger, and as you can see, this is the interesting part actually. Code now has piece. They're just elements which were created on the fly. Okay, um, so you can create tables that way. Of course, a little bit more structured. In one project, we create a table view. What we did in Swing with table row, which created itself with events. So it's uh, pretty neat. And uh, what happens? If this table has to be sortable and nice and fast, uh, you cannot spend you know, all, all the time to create a table. The cool story is, uh, among the JavaScript developers, there are two frameworks which are extremely popular. This is uh, Prime Faces Elements, which is just the front-end components without the back-end, and Vardin Elements. So Vardin Elements comes, comes with web components without the back-end. So the same tables we used for years are now uh, exposed just for the web developers without the Java backend. So I use the same components in my projects, so I can include, for instance, a Vardin table, or date picker is a classic one. And this is the old, uh, this is called Vardin elements. So you get just the JavaScript components without the Java backend. The same is true from Prime Faces, and uh, web developers really like it because they are, I mean, battle-proofed components, right? We use them for 10 years or 15 years. And uh, what they have, for instance, virtual scrolling. So they have a table with, uh, let's say, 20 visible rows, and the rows are getting reused. So if you scroll fast, it is crazy fast, because not like they create you know, thousands of DOM elements, they create 100 and reuse them, like element pooling. Okay? So also, cool news, actually, right? As old J Java server faces and Vardin uh, developers, are we valuable again on the market, I would say. This is uh, all about marketing. Okay, uh, I think this becomes a mess already. So I would now start with uh, layout, and then after layout, web components, and then I don't know what the master of ceremony says with the timing, then let's see. Uh, we can do web sockets or just say something. If to say nothing, I have no idea. Is this too much? Is this too trivial? Or uh, what you would like to... If, if you're completely bored, I can switch to Java E and show you something more exciting, right? Like uh, dependency injection and lightweight Docker and microservice, mini services, microservices out, mini services and whatever you like. <laughs> there will be no difference in code, but the name is different, of course. So, um, yes. Now, I'll show you now to swing developers what you can do with JavaScript right now. So we have two projects, and let's create the, the third one. Set up web standards projects, and call it just layout. Layout. So now I have my editor again. Oh, sorry. Editor again, and the trick wi with browser sync, and we are here. So. You know what uh, actually HTML5 is? So what is the crucial idea of, or the essential idea of HTML5? Hmm? What do you think? Wrong. <laughs> completely, completely wrong. <laughs> but this is what my clients actually think. My clients think uh, HTML5, like we you can throw away, you know, Flash and do all the great stuff with HTML5. Completely wrong. So what HTML5 actually is, just the spec, the HTML spec, is the s more or less semantic markup. So what they did, they introduced a new tags. 
which are very boring to my clients, but very exciting to us. Why? I'll show you in a second. And what the uh, tags are, there are new tags like main, uh, sidebar, uh, what else, nav, header, footer, um, small, which has a different meaning. So the idea of HTML5 is that the tags, oh, a trick, wait a second. I was a hero, uh, Antonio, if you attend the masterclass CSS, show this. This is the old trick, what I did as a fresh Java developer. Marquee, hello, Chuck. <laughs> this is HTML6. <laughs> Can, and I just forgot it. There was um, speed or something, as I remember. Faster? Hard to tell. But I was the hero 1996 because I knew this. And the other tech, of course, Blink. I think this does not work anymore. <laughs> Blink. Uh, <laughs> no, you see, it does not work. No. But show the, the trainer this marquee and ask him, you know, whether it is a good idea <laughs> for interactive apps. <laughs> What's the feedback? Is it will be a nice, you know, the, f the first time. So I know marquee. Is it good or we, we or say we don't actually need the CSS because this works well. <laughs> <laughs> this would be my thing. Um, okay, um, this is the difference between HTML4 and 5. In HTML4, we tried with with markup to create nice looking pages, and HTML5 comes without any look and feel. It's just the meaning and the and the look and feel comes from CSS. So this as, as should be, right? And this is somehow crucial. Yeah. Why? What I can do, and now what you should should learn to be a hero, Emmet. You know Emmet? E M M E T. Emmet. You don't know Emmet? Main and the main tag comprises Header, nav, footer, done. Cool, right? But it was wrong. It should be main and descent. And then header, uh, content, footer, nav. So main, header, content, footer. Also, if you have something like uh, ordered list, list item, 10 times, done. On this is called Emmet, E-M-M-E-T, is available for all IDEs. Uh, there's the only plugins I have to install in NetBeans, so I have it in NetBeans. It's available out of the box in IntelliJ, WebStorm, and uh, also in, what is it, Visual Studio Code, Emmet. You are crazy fast. With Emmet, E-M-M-E-T, okay. So this was the first trick. But this is what the web developers are doing anyway, so we cannot impress them with that, unfortunately. And um, so what we have here, header, content, footer, and here the old trick, uh, unordered list, let's say list items two, uh, first, next. So we have now some layout on the hello is no more needed, unfortunately. And there will be no JavaScript so far right now. So I can delete the JS, just CSS. Delete. Have to trash. So we have that. Style. So what I can do, of course, I can say header, uh, background. And what I recognized, if you just use the light version, it always looks nice. So um, this is blue. And just to, ma to make it recognizable, background, light, something. So, and content is wrong. There is no content. This was my invention right now. So let's do uh, content. Uh, diff is actually really bad because diff is nothing. It's just, so diff. Actually, we don't need it. We have enough. We have head, footer, 
Naf. Yeah. Footer. Light. What uh, background? Light. Uh, pink. Very important. So we have header content and nav. Uh, background. Light. Wow. Light. Sea green. Beautiful, right? So you are the designer, chief designer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you want, it's great. So uh, we have that. So we have footer content uh, and there is no content. So we have just uh, footer, header, and nav. Another one, but there is no nothing else. So nav, nav. Okay, looks good. Okay. Now I have the main one. And let's create a layout. So this is not very good, I would say. So we can rearrange that. And uh, there is a grid back layout in Swing. Do you remember that grid back layout? Yes, no, no. We have something similar in JavaScript. Display grid. CSS grid. And we can say, what was it, row, grid. Template columns, and what can wha what I can say I can say I would like to have two columns, for instance, and the first column column is one fraction unit. Fraction unit is um, a fraction of the whole, so it's proportion one to three, for instance, and the next one will be three fraction units. So now it's one, and this is three. Okay, so what would be nice actually? to have something else here inside. So now I forgot actually one tag. Um, it was not content main we have already. Uh, let's say what we need here. Article section, of course. Article section is nice, um, or article. Article. <coughs> Do some fake news is very important. Taxi is fast. Right? So uh, just to generate some traffic. So we have, um, and now we can say the article is another light background, light, wow. Uh, this is light, golden, <laughs> raw, yellow. Is it visible? A little bit, yeah. So now we have uh, this column, and what I can also tell, you can say, okay, cool. But we can say grid, template, rows, and it's a two fraction unit, one fraction unit. So now it's the grid. So we have template uh, rows, and you see it's better. And what I could also say is the following. I would like to have it full screen. So how to achieve that? I could say height of the whole thing is 100 viewport height. And it's full screen. So, and then what I could do also say grid gap is one em, and em is the default size of the font. One em is the default size, and uh, one dot one would be one dot one in relation to the default size. And the default size depends on the user settings. I think usually it is fourteen. Fourteen is the pixel is the default size. So for us Java developers, don't use any pixels. This is the message. Why? Because we have too many devices. Okay. So what it means is most of the CSS grid frameworks are no more needed. So bootstrap foundation are questionable. This is the result of this. Agreed? Still boring. So we, have we can create very easily a grid. It's <laughs> not compatible with marquee, but <laughs> but uh, um, future proof, right? And um, now I can show you what we can do better than this. So let's say eliminate that. And what I can tell is grid area. I can introduce names, and now it becomes interesting. I, I can name it whatever I like. I will use the same names as the tags. Otherwise, it's dangerous in the workshop. If I misspell something, it won't work. Um, Grid area, footer, 
and uh, grid area uh, nav and grid area area article so and now grid template areas and now is going to be cool watch this footer uh, sorry this is header header this is this then uh, article article uh, done article article nav nav footer footer and it looks a little bit boring it looks that way but what I could do I could tell the following so okay not don't, don't do this but do for instance this nav nav and we have the nav here cool right so and now I can combine that and say okay grid template columns and I can say the first column is actually four fraction unit and the last one is two fraction unit because the uh, nav has to be more narrow than the content so what it means is we don't need CSS experts anymore so sorry Antonio so what we need the old swing developers you know to remember the how grid bag layout worked uh, is so as I said no if we wait long enough so the whole web development becomes more or less like uh, Java 1 uh, so my 1 0 not 1 8 like okay questions about that now I showed you a lot did why and the, the text you know nav and so forth so um, why is it so important because we have too many devices let's say on my strange resolution it doesn't make any sense to have nav here the nav should be at the bottom if I had a wider screen the nav should be genau at this, uh, genau is exactly like it is right now so how to fix that you know this with media queries so let's try this add media screen and max width let's say 800 pixels and I will do this here and now watch this if we switch to here you see this, this is the media query 800 pixels and I can create the other media query and say okay min width 801 and you see it starts here so what I introduced is the behavior between here and here right this is active this is active 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 so what I could right now to do right now is okay like now we have different behavior and this is here of course with the main and this is here and here this is the wider so this is okay and this should be header article and let's say nav at the bottom so let's see something happens but not a lot header article footer grid template main main this actually looks good <coughs> and the problem is this here What's wrong? Header, header, article, article. Footer, footer, and what's. Oh, this is okay. Strange. Somewhere is an error. Second grid. What I have here? But um, it looks good, it does not work. 
this is easy. You see, it, the taxi is fast, and here it, it shows something, but I have had a article, art footer, footer, nav, nav, there is header. Interesting. Um, what I will do, this might be the error. You're right. Should be. But um, maybe this is the problem. Should usually it shouldn't because um, I could add stuff into it. But let's make it briefly. Header. So article. Let's see. Header, header. Let's make it identical first. And And what could be, I always no. So noise and then the grid template areas height display grid. I have no idea. But if I just do this, okay, this works. So you can see this um, this changes this look and feel, but it's still display grid uh, height. 100 and now I do the last attempt if I define this here Antonio is fault font is too big there's no difference and if I say Do now nav nav and without that and this is okay as you can see this already works somehow this is a difference but it is um, mess up media screen header this looks good and I would just like to remove that and see whether it works. If not, we will just proceed with web components. Yeah, as you can see, it changes the layout. What the problem is that this does not work anymore for no reasons, but it should. Just let me re reload that. Opening brackets. This is this looks good. This looks good. This looks good. I'm curious what it is because this works perfectly. This is actually fairly easy, and um, I would just take a look at the markup whether this um, we have had a footer article nav had a footer article nav. And what we're referring to is should be the same. Header, footer, article, nav. Here's also nav. And we have article, nav, footer, header. So it looks good. It does not work. And this should be also s media screen and max width and min width. This means maximum 800. Then it's the nav should be the nav should be here it worked right <coughs> it worked briefly and then stopped and um, and here the nav should be not here rather than 
at the side, on the side. Yeah, it changes the look and feel. The problem is, I don't know why, it just, uh, this part. Yeah, this is like a mess up layout and I don't know why. Um, what I'm pretty sure is this is right because we see here the uh, breakpoints. You see 800, 800, you see this is active and somehow this is here mess up. This is grid area templates. Without that, it worked. But this is how we would apply responsive layout. And it does not have to be inline. What you could do, you could load complete different style sheets. So this is just simplified for the, uh, for the workshop. You could go, uh, go to the browser and say, if, if something is larger or broader than 800 pixel, load this style sheet, otherwise the other one. So this is now inline a media query. Okay. Um, I'm pretty sure that this is right and this is also right. Why it does not work, no idea. Pardon? You, you, you can do this. So what we could do, we can say, uh, we, we can combine that with uh, grid, uh, grid template, what was it, template uh, columns, and say one fraction unit and two fraction units for both. Oh, works better, right? This is what I forgot. And rows is two and one to make, let's see, almost, and then this doesn't. Yeah, a uh, little bit better. The problem is we have one, two, three, four, four, four or three, we should be Something like this. Auto works. So. I think. No, what I, uh, what a second, uh, now, now. The last thing, now, now, just rearrange the order, was this just will work, article, article. <coughs> and this is, uh, header, header, now, to the article. Yeah, as well as you can see, we have the problem now here with the height, I think. This is what you said. Also somehow, um, this is larger than my viewport. So this is too small for the, this. oh, you see, this is 460. So it does not fit into resolution. This might be the problem. But from the structure, it is identical. What you can, what you usually do, you have common layout outside and in media queries like if else. If we are on this device, apply this tie sheet and the others. What the I attempted to show you, and it will work, I will check it into my GitHub repository. You can, you can download this tomorrow. Um, what, um, what, uh, um, what, what works is the, 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 difference, uh, the different switches between these tie sheets. And, um, and um, the problem is, th I have, as, as, as you can see, I have 460 pixels height and this does not fit the screen here.
Okay, this was attempt to show you the layout with CSS grids are supported everywhere except Internet Explorer 11. So this is a minor support, everyone else is available. And, uh, and there is another uh, one dimension, uh, dimensional grid is called uh, the flex box. There is just one row or one column. This is uh, more powerful, so this is like a grid. And the flex box is just one row or one column from a grid. You can also combine both. And this is the new CSS, so you don't have to play, you know, there's a margin and padding still works, but yeah. So I would say still WebSockets, or WebSockets are uh, boring, or Web Components first, right? Yes. Web Components, okay. Um, so I'll start with Web Components. Uh, not responsive. You see, the problem was the resolution, so if I would try with that, it works. The problem was I, because of the resolution, now it works, and now if we will, that now let's try to change it the last time for you, so you will see that it works. So 460 pixel, I, I recognize it's too, too late. 460 pixels is, ga is gar nichts, is nothing in German. Okay, CD layout code, and just to do it here, now we can just quickly change it. So if this is larger than uh, no larger than 800 min width, this is uh, at least 800. I would like to have the nav. here and here but I have to delete it here you can see here and then if it's smaller now we have responsive layout <coughs> cool right and I can say it is just you know it is completely so so it goes through and um, yeah and now is no this is how it should be so we have common layout here, also with template columns, and these are the differences which are device specific. Cool, I'm glad it works because it always works. This the problem was, you know, the the <laughs> small browser window, of course, caused by Antonio Goncalves because of the big font. <laughs> um, okay, layout done, so it works. So I'm glad right now. Um, web components. Five minutes to go, there's enough time to explain web components, right? So, uh, <coughs> set up web standards project. And now call it uh, water closet, is a double C. So, web component. Uh, browser sync. So, what component is? It's like JSF, but in browser. <laughs> so what I would like to do is to create my own tag. And now the first observation. So I go here. And let's say I create a tag and say, uh, uh, let's say I call it Paris. Paris. Paris, and if I try to select that, Paris, it is visible. The question is, what is it, the Paris tag? Um, how to find it out? Document, document, query, selector, Paris, const Paris equals console dir Paris console and Paris is HTML unknown element so if the browser does not understand something it says unknown element but it's still still visible so you can invent your own tags but they are not very powerful they are just there and are rendered somehow watch this what I could do I could change the Paris to a Paris. 
switch to here and say a Paris and now HTML element the question is why is the difference what is the difference between Paris and a Paris the answer is you cannot know this yeah uh, this is already the browsers are prepared to support custom elements so like own web components and all web components have to have dashes in the name. Why? Not to clash with existing elements. Because uh, you could create your own div and override the div element, but there is no element, not even marquee, with a dash. You know? So this is actually strange at first, but I would say reasonable standard. So, you know this right now? So now let's create a cool tag and this tag is called const cla uh, class fake news extends HTML element. And this HTML element has to have a constr constructor and this is an everything, anything which inherits from HTML element um, is a custom element and I have to invoke super. So this is like so, in Java E, we have post construct and in Spring as well. And uh, in JavaScript, there is connected callback. Connected callback. So, what it means, the same best practice, uh, nothing which is uh, all initialization code which is DOM specific should happen in connected callback. It's the same like uh, if we need to know in post construct. Um, in, in Java E, we can rely on the dependency injection. And here we can rely on the existence of the DOM. So let's try this. Console lock. I'm, I'm connected. Okay. And now custom elements is uh, an interface uh, or JavaScript function which allows us to register new elements. And with define it's possible. So the first is a string with the name fake news. And then the class, and the class is fake news. Now I have my own element registered. This is enough. And to show you that it actually works, I could say this dot inner text equals taxi is super fast. So we have this. The taxi driver drove like I would say 30 kilometers per hour, completely easy, and, and asked me, you know, uh, how much energy in Germany is generated from wind? Uh, uh, and I say, okay, drive faster. I mean, I don't care. So please go <laughs> faster, right? <laughs> and so, <laughs> and I ask him. W what have you d uh, done before you were you were a taxi driver? And he, he answered me, I worked in a, m in a flower shop. I was like, okay, <laughs> go faster, please. <laughs> and then <laughs> we drove one, one hour, 20 minutes, and they told me, you know what? We can be faster. It's like, why? It's like, because I could take the bus lane. It's like, then take it. <laughs> take the bus lane. And then shortly before the door, he asked me, do you visit your family here? I was like, yeah, yeah, kind of. So, fake news. Fake news. Taxi super fast. I'm connected. So what you did? No colors, nothing, and you like it. So, really nice. Um, this is an, a web component, a uh, web component in uh, one one, no one zero is the current one, and it's going to be supported by all browsers. And uh, and I don't know whether you heard about Polymer. This is a new or new is a Google framework, and the new YouTube is working on that. So uh, and I think this is the future. Uh, web components with web standards. And um, the Vardin elements, the table, you get it as a web component. 
and uh, what happens in the recent web component spec prior I would say one year ago the web components were imported with HTML imports and right now you can use the JavaScript imports so this is the main difference so uh, it is it really looks like Java and for us Java developers I would say it's nice also I really like it it's not like a what I really didn't like is the old JavaScript with the function and, and var and this and that and strange behavior, but this is like really like JavaScript, uh, like Java. Question so far. So then I show you, if you this was the custom element spec. The next spec is Shadow DOM, and this is quite exciting. So I would like to explain you Shadow DOM uh, because it's uh, important for performance and impor perf important for larger apps. So let's say, what I could do in the fake news, so if we have no time, just stop me, then uh, it stopped, uh, otherwise I will just hack something. Perfect. So let's say I don't have here the inner text, rather than this append child or something like that, uh, inner HTML, and now the new JavaScript syntax, I could create my template and say I have here, let's say uh, P, or h1 uh, taxi h1 article super fast in Paris this is a uh, article so as you can see this is here now rendered as a custom element and I could of course use HTML and say h1 is the background of course for this taxi driver, I would say light pink. Uh, so, uh, so this is pink. And now we have a, 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 a little bit of a problem, because what we could do, we could override a prepared style from Vardin from 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 the page. This could be useful, but sometimes it isn't. And even worse, what I could do here, let's say I have here my headline, like H2. Uh, Germans are never late, right? Something like this. <laughs> so then we have um, H2. Then what I could do here, I could actually say style, and this is verse, style, style, and say here H2, background, red. And this is red. So what I could do, I could include a component, let's say from Vardin or from whatever, and break the outside style. This is the main problem. So and therefore, what you would do is the following. Let's watch this. Fake news. You see here, there is just my markup, nothing here. What I could do, I can say this root equals this attach shadow and say here... Uh, mode open now watch this now you see here shadow root open so if you inspect YouTube or Vimeo you will find the more complex elements are created like this and now instead of doing this I can say this root dot in HTML and as you can say there is no impact so this style does not leak out and the outer style does not leak in. Why? Because of encapsulation. So now every component is fully encapsulated, and this is the replacement of uh, how it's called inner frames, no inner frames, iframes, iframes. And for instance, Twitter, what they do, they use Shadow DOM to include their components into somewhere, you know, because it's fi uh, faster than iframes. And so we have now two specs: Shadow DOM. You learned about Shadow DOM. And you also learned about custom elements. And the HTML imports, you already learned with the import from before. Export default and import, this was already the import. So now we have custom elements. So there's another interesting call callback with attributes, but this is basically the spec. Uh, you wanted to ask me some something? No. I just inter uh, you wanted to ask me something? We 
background rain is only applicable on the edge. Uh, if you something like that, it's only applicable in the world well component. Yes. And the cool story is, if I go here and let's say this root look uh, uh, look um, query selector is there, I only will see what's in the component. So it's really nice. So I can really, if I have one button, I can go here and say, give me the button, regardless where the compo con component is plugged. Um, and in, one com in one large project, we ditched uh, Angular and replaced that with web components and uh, the it is crazy fast page. But this is a high profile page uh, with internal developers. And the cool story is they really like the approach because there is just just finite uh, amount of stuff to learn. It is just the spec. If you take a look at the JavaScript frameworks, you, you become crazy. I don't think uh, it's really hard to understand fully Angular 4 or 5 or 6 because not just one framework, there are multiple frameworks, sorry. Yeah. What, uh, Polymer 3 is the current one. What it does, it... Yeah, in one project we just have just plain web component yes. and in the other, in one project Polymer 2. Okay. And what really cool is uh, Polymer 3 because it looks like this and, um, or I don't use Polymer 3. What I use, I use the template language from Polymer called LitHTML, which is basically one JavaScript class. And what you can do is, it is like virtual DOM without virtual DOM. So it will uh, dynamically replace the variables very easy and it's based on standards. As I said, really, it's fully, full Java mindset. I don't like any external dependencies, no builds, just standards. And it's amazing what you can achieve. So I think the, my backend now, uh, microservice, is I think is 5K war, thin war, and the frontend as well. And it will never change. So we get Jakarta E and uh, Jakarta 10, and we can get you no know, Chrome 120, but this will ever always work. Like the marquee tag works for since 1999. That is the cool story. It will never disappear. Um, okay, what what also works is um, forgot the name um, attribute changed callback. I think let's try this attribute changed callback, and there are three parameters. As, as I remember, this was a name. I don't know. Uh, name, then old value and new value. And what I can do with that is uh, it was a uh, name, old value and new value. too much attribute attribute changed callback hopefully it is this and what it does is I could say fake news priority uh, level 42 and wrong name uh, what it should do it should fire that attribute level was changed to 42 and what polymer does in addition to that is it introduces here bindings that they look like this but it's optional so you get the bi bindings in addition to that but this is fully optional and attribute changed co ah static observed attributes forgot about that return uh, level observed why it looks good this in the array level observed attributes yes this is a getter level now 42 and this is, so what I have to do, do, I have to tell the browser which attributes 
to listen to, to changes. So I say listen to changes of the attribute level. And now if I change the level from null to 42, I get the callback here. I can do something with it. For instance, I could create an invisible component which talks to the server and configure the URI this way. URI, go to server. If the URI changes, it, uh, it reopens the connection to, to server, for instance. And I can, of course, nest the tags as well. So this is uh, what I show you right now. It comes with the browser. There is no additional framework needed. Um, the um, Angular elements is the newest invention of Angular. It will be compatible with that. Um, and uh, React and the others try also to be uh, 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 web components compatible. Over. So it's over. What? Um, so there will be a little bit more to show, of course, with web components and web. The message is, it is fun, it's easy to learn, but what, what I don't like, the frameworks, they are just crazy. If you look at the JavaScript frameworks, I don't even know the added value of them. It's like playing with technology without knowing why. So this is like, uh, and um, what, uh, if you have time, invest a little bit in the standards, and this is exactly what you did in Java, and, um, and your clients will like it. I don't know about your clients, my clients are larger companies, they're absolutely not interested, you know, to migrate a framework every half a year. And um, for me, as a concern, it's also boring. I, I mean, this is really not really exciting, you know, uh, task to m to 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 uh, to migrate from Angular one to Angular forty two or whatever. So uh, thank you. Enjoy Java E, of course. This is what is there. No old news. Um, I do it all the time. And this time, I wanted to show you something fresh and new. Uh, what I do in remaining time, and this is the web standards. It's called web standards and use the platform. So thank you and. See you in five years.